What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple finally released iOS and iPadOS 14.5 to the general public after going through numerous beta stages over the past few months. Now, in addition to iOS and iPadOS 14.5, Apple also released watchOS 7.4, macOS Big Sur 11.3, and tvOS 14.5. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.5. And this is perhaps the biggest update to iOS 14 since the initial release with more than 75 new features and changes, which I will be showing you in this video. But let's first start off by talking about the size, the build number and things like that. So you can see here, the size came in around 1.26 gigabytes on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which did come from iOS 14.4.2. So your size should be somewhere in that range. Now, if we go into our settings and check out the build number for this update, settings general about 14.5, you can see the build number there is 18E, 199. So if you were on the beta program, that is the same build number as the RC build. So you will not be getting the official release because you already had it a week early. And if we go down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that the modem has been updated as well to version 1.62.11. So if you were having issues with cell connectivity or anything related to the modem, those could be fixed in this update thanks to a firmware update right there. So now what's new here in iOS and iPadOS 14.5? And the first thing is unlock with Apple Watch, which is a new feature that allows you to unlock your iPhone while wearing a mask if you have an Apple Watch on your wrist. So I'm gonna bring over my daily device right here where I have this set up because I have my watch paired with this phone. So if we go into our settings and then go down to Face ID and Passcode, and if we scroll down a little bit, you will see this new section right here called unlock with Apple watch. And as you can see, my Apple watch is selected there and it says use the secure connection to your Apple watch to unlock iPhone when a mask prevents face ID from recognizing your face. Your watch must be nearby on your wrist unlocked and protected by a passcode. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. I'm going to put on a mask to show you guys how it works. So as you can see, and probably here as well, I am wearing a mask. So I'm going to go ahead and lock my device with my Apple watch on my wrist. And of course you don't have to do anything with your Apple watch except for make sure that it is unlocked on your wrist. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up face ID on my iPhone here. And as you can see, it unlocks right away. And we even get a little alert there on our Apple watch saying that it was unlocked from the Apple Watch. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's go ahead and swipe up to unlock our phone while wearing a mask. And as you can see, it works perfectly. And you can also lock the iPhone from the Apple Watch as well. So I'm gonna press unlock and you can see it puts this back to the lock screen. So really cool new features, definitely very beneficial while we are all still wearing masks. Now, speaking of the Apple Watch, if you use the unlock Apple Watch with iPhone feature, you will see that we have a new glyph in the alert up top when it indicates that you have unlocked your Apple Watch. So that is brand new there in 14.5. We also get two brand new Siri voices in this update. So if you go into our settings here and go to Siri and search, and then down to Siri voice, you will see, first of all, this whole section has changed as well. So I'm gonna bring up the previous iOS version, iOS 14.4.2, and show you guys what it looked like before and after. So if we go into our Siri and search right here, and then to Siri voice, you can see it went from accent to variety, and then down here from gender to voice. And then also it no longer says male or female under the genders, it just shows voice one through four. And you will notice there are two additional voices here in iOS and iPadOS 14.5, voice two and voice three. And this is just for the American variety. No other varieties here have these additional voices, but I'll go ahead and give you guys a preview of what these two voices sound like. So this is voice two. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. And then this is voice three. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So pretty cool, two new Siri voices to give you more you know, personality to your device and give you more options as to what you want Siri to sound like. Also, when you set your iPhone up for the first time, nothing is pre-selected. So the default Siri you've been knowing for a long time is not pre-selected. You get to pick from the start what you want the default Siri voice to be. Now, one of the headlining features, perhaps the biggest feature in iOS and iPadOS 14.5 is app tracking transparency. So if we go into our settings and go to privacy and then to tracking, you will see this right here where it says allow apps to request to track. And then you will get a list of the applications right here where you can turn this toggle on 
or off. And if you want to read every detail about this, you can click on learn more. But essentially, this is going to require app developers to ask for permission before they can track you across other apps and websites. So right now, app developers for every single application get access to your IDFA, which is the advertising identifier. And with that, they are able to track your activity across different apps and websites to basically better understand what you're interested in so that they can serve higher quality ads to you. So Facebook, of course, and Instagram are the most notorious for having ads pop up right after you visit a site or right once you go into a certain application or game. But now it won't be so easy for them and others to collect that specific data. So this is a big feature. Again, this is going to be the one that makes the headlines and definitely one that you want to pay attention to. And this is the type of pop up you're going to see once you install iOS 14.5 when you go into application. So it's going to say allow this app to track your activity across other companies, apps and websites. And it says your data will be used to provide you a better and personalized ad experience. And you can see there you have two options. You can say allow or you can ask the application not to track you. So that is new here in iOS 14.5 and definitely one of the biggest features to come to iOS period. Now onto a lighter note, iOS 14.5 also includes over 200 new emoji. So you can see this is just a selection of some of the new emoji here. A lot of the 200 that you're going to hear are basically just variations of like these final two emojis right there. These are going to be the main ones you will notice are brand new here in iOS 14.5. So if you're a fan of emojis, you will love this update because you do get quite a few new ones. Inside of the Maps application, we now get Waze-like features. So if you're a big fan of the application Waze for your maps, you will like this new iOS 14.5 update because Apple Maps is now getting features similar to that. As you can see here, including the report button where you can report speed traps, you can report a crash, you can report all types of things like that. Now also the UI is a little tweaked as well. So you can see when you start the navigation here, you had the end button previously, but now in iOS 14.5, it's not as easy to accidentally press. So there's been many times where I accidentally hit that red end button right now, but now you have to tap on this little arrow right here and it pulls up this menu where the X is right there. The end button is right there and it's now the circular X instead of this button right here that we had in previous versions of iOS. And if you were curious about what the reporting menu looked like, you could see these are the incidents you can report on the map. So you can report an accident, a hazard, and a speed check. And this is what it looks like when you actually report it on the road. So you can see that I reported a hazard on the road right there. And of course it will stay there and other people will see that as well. So really cool ways like features. And of course we have the redesigned maps UI where the end button has been moved as well. So some nice additions to maps here. We also have a slightly updated software update screen here in iOS 14.5. So you can see it shows that my software is up to date, but down here, since I have a beta profile installed, it shows also available iOS 14.6. And if you tap on that, it will take you to this screen right here where you can download the latest beta. But in the software update screen, it now shows you if you're on the latest release, you know, publicly right there with the option to also download a beta if you do have the beta profile installed on your device. Now also new in iOS and more importantly in iPadOS 14.5 is the ability to connect and use PS5 and Xbox Series X controllers. So yes, the next generation console controllers are now able to be used on iOS and iPadOS. So if we go into our settings here and then go to our Bluetooth, we'll try to pair this real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and hold these two buttons on the PS5 controller here, just to show you that it does in fact work on this DualSense wireless controller. So you can see it's in pairing mode right there. We've actually connected it before, so we're just gonna go ahead right here and you will see that the PS5 controller is connected right there on iOS 14.5. So you will be able to play games with this controller now on your iPhone or your iPad. And if you are utilizing the dual SIM feature on your iPhone 12, you are now able to have dual SIM 5G support. So that's right, you can now get 5G on both the eSIM and your physical SIM. So that was a feature that was promised. I'm pretty sure it was last year, but Apple has finally added it here in iOS 14.5. We also have a lot of changes inside of the music application and this update, and I've been loving these new music features. So starting off with some minor UI changes, you can see up top in the top right, there used to be the little rectangular add and then a plus icon, but now it's just the plus icon. So it's a little bit cleaned up up there in the top right. 
If we go down a little bit to the songs in like a playlist or in an album, you can see on the left hand or on the right hand side here on previous iOS versions, there was a red plus to indicate that you could download those songs. But now in iOS 14.5, it keeps it clean and you can see it's just the three dots right there. And if you go ahead and download a song, so I'm gonna go ahead and download this song right here. So let's go to download and you will see there's a little icon right there next to it in gray that shows that the song has been downloaded. So it's a lot more subtle and just a lot more clean in general on this screen right here. And if we scroll all the way down to a album at the very bottom, you will see now in iOS 14.5, it shows you exactly when the album or single was released. So before it would just show the year, but now you can see it shows the exact date that the album or the song was released. We also get swipe gestures in the music application. So if we go ahead and swipe over on a song right here, you can see we get certain options. Whereas in previous versions, you can see I'm trying to swipe and there are simply no swipe gestures. So you can see now we have a delete and a add to library or download button. And if we swipe to the right, we have play next or play last. So a quick and easy way to play next, play last, or to delete from the playlist or your library or download or add to your library. So I really love these swipe gestures that have been introduced with this update. And then when we go to the now playing screen right here, you'll notice some changes as well. So first off, if we tap on these three dots right here for the now playing menu, you could see it's no longer this really clunky, old, outdated looking menu that pulls up from the bottom. It's now this very quick menu that's more in line with everything else we see in iOS. And I like it so much better. Also, if we go into the lyrics right here, we can now share lyrics in iOS 14.5. So if we go and tap and hold on the lyrics right here, you will get this menu right here, which will allow you to send certain lyrics and the song, which I'll show you in a minute, via message, or you can send it, you know, Facebook, Instagram if you want, but it's going to be most beneficial via iMessage. So let's just say we wanted to select maybe just these three lines right here. Of course, you could select up to 150 characters. As you can see up top, it does show you the limit and you can replace certain characters if you want to. So if you go over, you will get this right here that shows you can replace if you want. But I'll just do, let's just do like these first two. Let's just do this, this through this. Okay, so those two right there, I'm gonna go to messages and this is what it will look like when you send it to somebody and it even shows the timestamp for when those lyrics were taken from. And if you tap on that, it will actually take you to the song and that specific part of the song. So really cool integration here with Apple Music and being able to send lyrics to somebody. And then just another small UI change I forgot to mention, if you go into the menu right here, you can see the play next and play last icons have changed in 14.5 as well. So you can see on the left how they looked previously, and now on the right, they are just a little bit cleaner. There's not really a you know long arrow like it was on previous versions. And also when you select a song to play next, so if we go to play next right here, you can see on the big version it's changed as well. Another really cool addition here inside of the music application is the ability to search for record labels. So if I search for a record label like 88 Rising, for example, you could see that before it wouldn't actually show you the record label, it would just show you the artist. But now in 14.5, you could see it shows underneath record label. And if you go and tap on that, you could see all of the top releases and the latest releases from that specific label. So you can see, you could even read about the label right there. So this is a tremendous way to find new music. Like if you like an artist and you see they're signed to a certain label and you wanna find maybe other people signed to that label, you can now do so. And I think this is a great feature, not just for us users, but also for labels and artists. It's great for discovery of new music. Also in the library and music, we now have the made for you section. So you can see on iOS 14.4.2 and previous versions, we did not have the made for you section right here. And you do have to add one to your library for this to show up. So just a new section for that, which is pretty neat. And then finally, I did also wanna mention that the songs now scroll again here on 14.5. So for whatever reason, on iOS 14.4, the songs on the lock screen just simply would not scroll. It would not show you the full song, wouldn't show you the full artist, but you can see now on 14.5, everything scrolls again on the lock screen, which is great. That's how it should have stayed all along. We also have some pretty major changes inside of the podcast application. So starting off with some UI changes, you can see up in the top right, we no longer have that bell. We now have a profile picture, which indicates that we have like a full profile here inside of podcast. If you tap on it, you can see it shows that versus this in the past. Also, the podcast page is completely redesigned here in iOS 14.5, and you can see it just looks tremendous now. It looks so much better 
than it looked on previous versions. In previous versions, it looked like it was from the 1990s, but now it finally looks modern and up to par with pretty much Apple Music. It's really matching Apple Music now here in 14.5, which is great to see. I mean, everything is just so much better laid out. You can see the reviews up top. You can see the latest episode button right there. You can see all episodes. There are gestures here as well. So if you swipe over, just like in music, you can see you have these swipe options that used to just be a delete, but now you can you know, save, you can download, things like that. If you swipe over to the right, you can do that to you know indicate that you've already listened to that episode. So really awesome features there. And then also if you tap on these three dots right there, you can see it gives you that menu versus you know no menu before, just the old school menu that popped up from the bottom like this. And then if you tap on the three dots up in the top right, you can now see that it says unfollow instead of unsubscribe. So Apple has changed the verbiage from subscribe and unsubscribe to follow and unfollow. Then you also have the settings right here for the podcast. If we compare this to previous versions, if we go to settings right here, you can see we have hide played episodes. That is a new section right there. And then we also have quick access to downloads. So you can see we have the automatic downloads, limit downloads, and remove played downloads. This is now inside of the podcast application. You don't have to go all the way into settings anymore to see that. And then also you can see it shows what podcast up top next to done instead of just saying settings like it said previously. So just a lot of changes to the podcast application here in 14.5. I absolutely love it and you will too if you are big into podcasts. We also have a change to the guides inside of Maps. So you can see if you search for a location and go to the guides, if you tap on that right there, you will see a pretty big change in the UI and just the layout of Maps. It looks so much better and more modern here in iOS 14.5 compared to previous versions. We can also now ask Siri to call for emergency support. So instead of having to tap on the side button five times rapidly, we can now ask Siri to do that. So I'll just go ahead and show you an example. Call emergency support. And you can see it will start it right there. Of course, I'm going to cancel that so it doesn't get called, but you can now do that from your voice, which is nice. We also get some new actions inside of the shortcuts application. So if we go into a shortcut, let's start a new shortcut here. We have three new actions in iOS 14.5. So the first one is going to be for take screenshots. So if we go ahead and type in take screenshot, you can see that is a brand new action right there. We also have this one right here, orientation lock. So set orientation lock, that is also new here in 14.5. And then the final one is going to be voice and data. So this is going to allow you to set the voice and data to what you want to. So if you want to have a shortcut to set your voice and data to only 5G, if you want it to be only LTE, or if you want it to be 5G auto, you can do that. And of course you can have a shortcut to you know set that setting inside of your cellular settings on your phone so you don't have to go in there and manually change it yourself every single time also just a small change inside of the airplay menu right here the speakers and tv text is no longer in all caps so previously that was in caps lock and it didn't look as good in my opinion but now apple has fixed that and it's no longer in caps lock where it says speakers and tvs right there you might also see this menu in this new update so you can see here all i did was ask siri to play a certain song and you can see it responded back with what do you want to play that on so you can see you could set a new music default through siri so if you wanted to play music always on spotify you can or on pandora books apple podcasts or apple music so it's nice that apple is opening that up and they're allowing like spotify to be used as the default player here starting with 14.5 we also have a slightly modified magsafe charging animation when you're in low power mode so i'm going to go ahead and put my device into low power mode and you can see when i set it on the magsafe charging puck you can see that the animation turns yellow now instead of just staying green, no matter if you were in low power mode or not on previous versions. So nice little tweak there from Apple. Another small but useful change in this update is that you can now ask Siri to turn auto brightness on or off. So turn auto brightness on. And you can see it says auto brightness is already turned on. Turn auto brightness off. Siri will respond and tell you that auto brightness has been turned on or off. You could not do that 
and previous versions. We also get a couple of minor changes inside of the Reminders application, and you will see those on the splash screen when you open up the Reminders app for the first time on 14.5, and you can see the two new features are shown right there. So you can now sort reminders and print your reminders lists. So if you go to continue, I will show you how this works. So if you're on a reminder right here, if you tap the three dots, up in the top right. You have some new options in this menu and the main ones are going to be sort by and print. You could see those were not there in previous versions of iOS. So if we tap on sort by, this is where you can sort the reminders by the due date, the creation date, the priority, and the title. And of course you could do earliest or latest first. And then of course, like the splash screen showed, you can also print these reminders very easily as well. Inside of the news application, we have a new search bar down here in the bottom right. There's no search in previous versions. And when you go to that, you can search things like channels, topics, and stories right here. So if I just search for Apple, for example, you will see it will show up the articles from Apple in the news application. You have the topics as well, and then just stories. You could not do that in previous versions. And then also on the news plus tab, you will see that you have the for you section right here. You have the browse the catalog section. So just a couple of new options added to these little sections right here up top in 14.5. Inside of the translate application, we now have a couple of new features. So you can see right next to the little favorite star right there at the bottom, we have a dictionary button now on 14.5. If you tap on that, it will show you the definition of the word that you just wanted translated. So you can see Ola right there. It tells you what that is in the dictionary. Then also if you tap and hold on the play button right here, you can change the playback speed of that translation. Whereas in previous versions, if you tapped and hold on the play button, it doesn't do anything. It just reads out what you just said. So you have the option to play it at one and one fourth speed, one X, three fourth X and half X. So if you want it slower or faster, of course, faster would only be the top one right there. You can slow it down for these lower versions as well. If you're like trying to learn a language or something like that. Now, when it comes to iPad OS 14.5, we also have some exclusive changes to the iPad as well. So obviously not quite as many as we have on iOS. Of course, everything from iOS does also transfer over to iPad OS. You're going to get all the new features that were included in iOS on iPad OS, but there are some exclusive ones here as well. And starting off with emoji search. So if we go down, to the emojis right here, you can see that you can now search. You have the little search icon in the bottom left. You can now search for emojis in 14.5. So I'm not sure what took Apple so long for that, but you can now do that on iPad OS. Also, you can now use Hey Siri while using your iPad and have it work in the background. So if I go ahead and say, what time is it? You can see that I'm working in the background while Siri is talking and you could not do that in previous versions. And even if I go into like an application and I go ahead and say, what's three times six, you can see that I can continue scrolling here and doing everything without Siri taking up the whole screen and not allowing me to use, you know, anything else on my iPad. So I'm glad Apple changed that. And then another small change that Apple made to iPad OS 14.5 is that the boot logo, the Apple logo, when you boot up, your iPad is now dependent on the orientation. So if you are in landscape mode, it will show the boot logo in landscape mode. If you're in portrait mode, it will have the Apple logo in portrait mode. So it now knows the orientation of your iPad when you're booting it up, which is cool. I mean, it's just a small thing, but I'm glad Apple is still adding these small features to the iPad. Now, as far as bug fixes go, iOS 14.5 does fix a lot of pre-existing bugs. So maybe bugs you've been having since iOS 14, all the way up to iOS 14.4.2. Some of those could be solved here in 14.5, and Apple does mention them in the release notes. So you can see the first one there, it says, Messages at the bottom of the thread may be hidden by the keyboard under certain circumstances. So if you're having issues with the keyboard being hidden or the bottom of the thread being hidden because the keyboard covers it up, that has been fixed here in this update. Also, deleted messages may still appear in spotlight search. That is a bug that has been fixed as well. And another one with messages, messages may persistently fail to send texts in some threads. So that was happening to me a lot with group chats. So if you have a group chat where some of the messages are green and not everybody has an iPhone, you could have had an issue with text just simply not sending. So that happened to me and it's good to see that that has been fixed in this update. Also, mail would not load emails for some users until restarting the device. So if you had that issue with mail, that will be solved in this update. Also, the call blocking and identification section may not appear in phone settings. 
iCloud tabs may not appear in Safari. So I had this issue as well on iOS 14.4, I believe, where my tabs just simply would not show up inside of Safari when I sync them via iCloud. And then also the iCloud keychain sometimes would not be able to turn off for some users. That has been fixed in this update. Also reminders created via Siri may be unintentionally set for early morning hours. So that was an issue that could have been impacting some users. We also have the battery health reporting system recalibration tool. So basically if you have an iPhone 11 series, there is a new recalibration tool for the battery. If you go into your battery health, you will see it will recalibrate your battery and give you a more accurate reading on the maximum battery capacity there. There's also a mention here of what could be a green tint solution. So Apple says, optimization to reduce the appearance of a dim glow that may appear at reduced brightness levels with black backgrounds on iPhone 12 models. So if you were having the green tint bug previously, that could be fixed here on 14.5. Let me know in a comment down below if that has in fact been fixed for you after updating to this latest software release. And then finally, we have two fixes for the AirPods. So AirPods audio routing to incorrect devices for automatic switching. That was an issue for some people in the past, and now that has been fixed in 14.5. I myself have had that issue many times where the auto switching would just switch to a device that's simply not playing audio instead of the device that's playing audio right in front of me. So also AirPods automatic switching notifications might be missing or duplicated. So yeah, as you can see, iOS and iPadOS 14.5 does patch up a lot of pre-existing bugs. And honestly, really the only bug I still have remaining on 14.5 after updating is inside of music. When I airplay a song to like a HomePod or if I do something to the TV, it's mainly with a HomePod for me though. So when I airplay a song, to a HomePod, this whole experience is just very laggy. So like if I go to the next song, you can see sometimes it just lags. I mean, look at that. It's not switching to the next song until, you know, it's just very behind. And then also in the queue, sometimes that is also buggy. Like if I move a song, you can see there, it's just very slow and it doesn't always move to the spot I want it to right away. It will just kind of move around and then move up to the top. And then also sometimes when I like go out of the application and come back in, it will show a different song here on the now playing view that's not actually playing on the home pod and i'll have to go into here into this menu right here tap on this and then go to like the office and then it shows up here in the now playing screen so just a lot of issues with airplay to home pod and 14.5 still just a really laggy buggy experience now i will say that this has been addressed in 14.6 i am currently running the beta on a different device but 14.6 does improve this bug, this issue I've been having here on 14.5. So that is something to look forward to on 14.6 when that does eventually get released. If of course you were having the issue with AirPlay to HomePod. Now, when it comes to the performance here in iOS and iPadOS 14.5, I've definitely noticed an improvement here over iOS 14.4 and 14.4.1, 14.4.2. So I have run Geekbench tests all throughout the beta stages and on the final, and they are higher than any previous version. And also just day-to-day -day usage just feels more fluid than it was on previous versions. We have a lot of bug fixes, a lot of backend security enhancements. A lot of those things kind of add up, plus the overall raw performance boost that you get with this update is definitely noticeable on my main device, my iPhone 12 Pro, also on the 12 Pro Max here and on my iPad Pro. Now, when it comes to battery life, I've honestly not been able to tell that big of a difference going from the previous version to iOS 14.5 and iPadOS 14.5. Now, I wish it was as noticeable as the performance, but it's really just not. I mean, I've been using this all throughout the beta stages and here on final, and I really have not been able to tell that big of a difference. I mean, you may see like a 20 to 30 minute increase in terms of on-screen time, but it's not going to be anything drastic, nothing you're gonna be able to tell you know, instantly. Really just nothing you're gonna to want to update just for battery life improvements because you're not gonna get it. Now, if you were having you know, like battery drain on previous versions, iOS and iPadOS 14.5, could very well fix that because that was probably a bug. But if you were not having any issues before, I would not expect a huge change in the battery life when updating to 14.5. But keep in mind with the amount of bug fixes and things like that in this update, you know, you are probably going to see at least a small increase in battery life, but I'm just saying it's not going to be anything super noticeable. So now with all of that being said, should you update to iOS and iPadOS 14.5? And I say absolutely. I mean, there are tons 
of new features and changes, some major bug fixes and security patches as well, not to mention, you know, new emojis. And then also, you know, things like the app tracking transparency feature. We have things like, you know, the maps changes, just so many big changes and security updates in this specific update, iOS 14.5. I think it's a no brainer to update. And then finally, I wanted to talk about what is next for Apple. So as you guys know, I cover every single update here on the channel. And if you didn't know, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. So you do know when I post new updates because I do update you guys about everything that Apple releases in terms of the software hardware as well, but mainly the software. So I do think an iOS 14.6 is coming. I mean, we, we're not getting iOS 15, the beta, until June. So we do have a couple of months you know, for some new releases from Apple. I do think a 14.6 is coming. We could even see a 14.5.1, but just keep it locked to the channel. I will also give you guys a follow-up update on 14.5 as well after a week of using it. So definitely let me know down in a comment below if you're having any issues with 14.5, if your battery life is you know, better, if it's worse, if there's a feature I didn't cover, whatever the case may be, I wanna hear your guys' thoughts down there in those comments below and you may be featured in my follow-up video coming next week when I talk about you know everything to do with 14.5 and how it's been running for me and for you guys. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. That is iOS and iPadOS 14.5, a massive update, You know, quite possibly the biggest iOS 14 update since iOS 14.0. So hope you guys enjoyed this long video. If you did, I would really appreciate if you gave this a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe if you have not done so already. I will be covering every single iOS update in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.